Voyager. What are we even doing? <laughs> Hi guys. So we went on a road trip recently. We went from Colorado to Alabama to the Carolinas to Virginia and DC and then up to New York City and then we went to Niagara Falls through Canada, skirted around Detroit and came back home. So it was a pretty long road trip and we've kind of gotten used to what we need to bring to entertain ourselves and avoid killing each other. So we thought we'd give you guys our road trip essentials in this video. What is this? DFTMEA. Okay, so what I like to do on road trips is look out the window and listen to things because I don't like reading in the car at all. It's, it's pretty bad actually. I brought this book which looked really good and like sad and stuff like that except for I couldn't read it because I got to the first page. The first page was fantastic. This is a good first page book so high recommendation. Uh, what I do like to do is I'll listen to music like usually one song on repeat for you know 12 hours. Um, so I always need my iPod which usually runs out of charge and then I'm just left humming to myself. Another thing I like to do is I like to draw lots of things. Um, this, this road trip I decided that it would be a good idea to start drawing the cast of Hamlet as animals. So there was Hamlet the pig and per ratio <laughs> the cat. <laughs> Get it? Because it's like... Yeah, mm. Another good thing to do on road trips is to have somebody you can talk to. Someone, you know, like that, that you can have a good conversation with and who understands you and has the same point of view. So that's why I brought this plant. Um, we have a lot in common. We both um, like oxygen, um, some of us more than others, and I mean we're both really cool, I mean if you, if you think a plant can't be cool, boom, this plant is cooler than you will ever be. So we, we had some nice conversations about the world economic problems and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's really fun when you have somebody to talk to, so. Also, when I do read on road trips, which I do occasionally, just not, not this time. I have some recommendations. I have The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, and it was so good. This is about um, World War II. Um, it's about two sisters um, in France, and they fought in the resistance, and it was just fascinating. It's historical fiction, and this was a really captivating story. Just highly, highly recommend this one, and it has shorter chapters, which is really nice for when you're on the road or have a really short attention span. And then another one is All the Light We Cannot See, which I'm sure all of you have heard about. Um, again, this is France during World War II, but it's interesting because there's one girl who's blind in France, and then the perspective of a boy who is actually a German, and he becomes a Nazi soldier, and it's very fascinating. Those are good things to read if you can focus, unlike me. So I hope you enjoyed my essentials, and... Now, on to Rain's Essentials. Okay, so for my staple items on a road trip, the first thing would be sunglasses. And these are really nice, especially when you're sitting in the passenger seat and the sun is just like shining in. To protect your eyes, it's always super handy to have sunglasses. And so I just found these at Payless Shoes. I know, like Payless Shoes, sunglasses, what? But I did um, just, they have one of those little sunglasses racks, and so it just has white trim and a little bit of gold on the side, and they're only like $10, so I just picked up some of The next thing I have is the book Skinny, and this is by Donna Cooner, and it was just a really good book, and it was small, which is nice because you don't want something really big and clunky to take up a ton of space on the road. So I just, I like this one because the plot was good and it kept the pages turning, but if you wanted to, you could just like leave it and you could come back, pick it up, and you would be set. So it was really nice for a road trip in that way. And the last thing I have is just earbuds. And so these are from just the Apple Store, actually. Just regular cheap earbuds. But um, I did just bring the computer and I would plug these in and I would do Rosetta Stone. And that was actually super handy and a really productive way to spend all those hours in the car. So if you're trying to learn a language, I would definitely recommend just bringing the computer along with you and it's a great way to fill those hours. Okay, so that's it for all of my items. I hope that these were helpful to you and let's move on. This t-shirt looks really boyish. Oh well. This is the bag I brought on the trip. It's from Icing and it's got all kinds of little compartments. I got this journal in Utah when I was visiting my friend Faith and I love it. It's got this spine with, um, I don't know, it's like an open spine. It's kind of weird. But it's beautiful because it lays 
perfectly flat when you put it on a desk. This was from Barnes & Noble and it was like $11. So this is the Kindle Paperwhite. It's got technology to make the page read as if it's paper, but you can actually adjust the brightness. So if it's nighttime, I don't need to use a flashlight to read it. Um, and I got this on sale for $100. Amazon has it on sale a lot. You can get it on sale for $100. My absolute favorite book from this trip was Half the Sky by Nicholas D. Kristoff and Cheryl Wu Dunn. Um, I've read this book before. I read it last summer, and it's fantastic. Like, you should read it. I do need to warn you, it is probably an R-rated book. It's about, um, basically, women. And it's about the, they call it the gender side, so discrimination against women because they're women. Yeah, there's some gruesome things. There are some things that if you're maybe a sheltered homeschooler, you shouldn't read. I am kind of a sheltered homeschooler. If you're a homeschooler, you're probably sheltered. You don't know that you're sheltered, but you are. Maybe ask a parent. My other favorite book from this trip was The Smartest Kids in the World. And this is kind of an analysis of education systems and like what Korea does that makes it score so high, what Poland does, what Finland does. Fascinating stuff. I'll link to the other books that I read on this trip along with my ratings of them if you're interested. Okay, for podcasts and audiobooks, my absolute favorite audiobook from this trip was The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. Um, this book is completely written as letters. It's set right after World War II. Usually I prefer to read a book. I don't like to listen to audiobooks for the first time because I um, tend to fall asleep or lose focus. I highly recommend listening to it because of the different voices and the, okay, let's face it, all the British accents. Probably my favorite podcast was from the Desperation Podcast and it's, um, it's called Conference 2014, John Eldridge. And it's basically just, you know, a sermon, and um, in it, John Eldridge talks about the characteristics of Jesus as the Bible shows them. Listen to it. I got this dress at Old Navy. It was on sale. I think it was $10. It's kind of like a t-shirt material. We were on a trip for 15 days, and I wore this six days. Six days. And I even wore it as a nightgown sometimes. Holy cow, I lived in this dress. And I wish I had like three copies of it so I could have worn it every day. I love dresses for travel because they're very comfortable but they look kind of sophisticated. So yes, this dress was perfect. Thank you guys for watching today. I hope you enjoyed our road trip tips. And um, sorry that we post so irregularly. We kind of do it so that you have to subscribe to get our new videos because it's not every Sunday. So subscribe.